Alright, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem Yel Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, great millstone that rule well. Blessings to the elect and the remnant of Israelites who are scattered worldwide who are predestined to be saved. This is Brother Yakal coming with another video. The last part of Daniel chapter 3, the breakdown of the whole chapter. And Lord willing, you brothers and few sisters will be edified. Um, so, so far we've done uh, two parts okay, of uh, Daniel chapter 3. And it's mainly about the golden statue. You know, so we've done part one here. And now we've done part two here. And uh, this is going to be the final part. And uh, like I've said before, Romans 15 and 4 says, What is written before time is written for our learning. All right? Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Nothing is new under the sun, you know? Because uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whose names were as those were their Babylonian names, their slave names. But that's why I put this thumbnail here. Their real names were uh, Mishael, Azariah, and Hananiah. All right, they were given an ultimatum to worship this golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar set up. You know, or if not, be put in a fiery furnace. You know, and be boiled to death. Okay. So we're going to continue. All right, and we were at. Let me click this off this. We were at verse 19. Yeah, we, were, we did 18. And now we're at verse 19. And um, the reason why we, we're doing this, because basically we're going to be put with a choice. We're, we're, we're going to have a choice to, um, you know, to take the mark. We're going to have a choice, all right, whether to take uh, the MOTB, which is this, all right, you know, and you can see this devil right here, he's um, promoting it, you know, implanted microchip harmless or mark of the beast, and it's not harmless because any kind of, listen, I've had operations, so I've had, I've had two hip replacements and I've had a knee replacement all right and there's nothing better than having your body intact and not having foreign objects into your body okay believe me there could be complications I've been into uh I've, you know I've been to like clinics where I've met other people who have had knee replacements hip replacements it's been infected or had sepsis etc so putting foreign objects into your body is a risk okay it's the same way just on the news uh yes today and yesterday they did a uh, special about these stupid women who have got low self-esteem who are going to turkey to have cheap surgery to lose weight you know to actually have liposuction take weight off their stomach or have um brazilian butt lifts and a lot of them have died, you know, because of that. So you don't want to have a foreign object in your body. So the MLTB is this microchip, all right? And we're going to have to have the same faith, courage, confidence, and fear of the Lord like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had, and Daniel had, all right, to say no to the enemy, okay? So I'm just going to go... Uh, straight to Daniel 3 and 19, all right, because that's where we uh, left off, all right, so um, Daniel, and you look at the heading here, Daniel's friends protected, because Daniel knew them, okay, all right, so it says Daniel 3 and 19, all right, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, so he was angry because in the previous verses, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made it quite clear that they're not going to bow down to no image. All right. So then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the form of his visage was changed 
against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His visage means his his appearance, his physical appearance, his face. He got angry because when you're at the top and you're a king, everyone kisses your ass, and you know, you know, even if they don't like you, they pretend to like you. You know, so he's not used to someone saying no. You know, disobeying him. So his visage, his facial appearance, changed. All right, against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was than it was than it was wont to be heated. So basically they um he ordered them to make that fiery furnace seven times hotter than it is. And remember the Lord remember in 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 the Earlier in the chapter, all right, it tells you that Nebuchadnezzar is God's servant. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let me try and find it. The uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, gathered together the princes, captains. Okay, uh, let's see here. Set book. There's a part in. There's a part in here. I can't remember where it was. But in the chapter, let me just leave it. But in in the chapter in the previous videos when we, when we was reading it, it said that Nebuchadnezzar was God's servant and God and he is God's servant on the left hand side. Okay. If you are in tune with God's law, statute, commandments, and you're Israelite, and you're doing your best, you know, to obey the Lord, then you're a servant of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai on the right hand side. If you're just a nigger, all right. If you're just a West Indian, a West African nigger, all right, or a, a, a spick, a wetback, a, a, a stupid gangbanger, just a complete degenerate, then you are a servant of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but on the left hand side, all right. So Nebuchadnezzar and all these heathens, these kings that think they've got power, all right, and the only power they have is what the Lord has given them. They are the Heavenly Father's servants on the left-hand side. All right. So Nebuchadnezzar's uh, thought was full of fury and the form of his visage, his face, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded all right, that they should heat the f um, furnace one seven times more than it was want to be heated all right and notice it says seven times and in the scriptures seven is completion okay and um that's why if you look in left hand side satanism kind of thing they always try to disrespect god by copying him uh, one of the biggest witches in the world alistair crowley he uh, had a uh, mantra he had a numerology mantra called 777. Michael Jackson had that on his clothes, everything. You know, 777. Is, is they always try to mock God or try to uh, emulate him. But they can't, you know, because he's the most high. All right. So, uh, verse 21. Okay. Why do I keep clicking on this? All right. Uh, Daniel 3 and 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their garments and were cast in the midst of the fiery furnace. So they said no. So they grabbed them, all right, and bound them, all right, their clothes and everything, and threw them in the fiery furnace. So they were willing to die rather than to bow down because they knew that bowing down to that image is idol worship and worshiping another god. And they knew their god. That's the main point. They knew what the Heavenly Father um, expects from them. And they feared the Lord. Okay. And that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. And they had faith. All right. They had faith. Because early in the chapter, they said that, look, the Lord can deliver us out of your hand. Did they not say that? All right. You know. Here you go, Daniel 3 and 17. They said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us out of the fiery furnace. 
and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. See, so they had faith that the Lord would deliver them. Um, um, but they, they also knew that it's the Lord's choice whether he wants to deliver you or not. All right. So sometimes the Lord is going to deliver some of the elect out of harm, but some of the elect is going to have to um, go through harm, going to be tortured and killed in very bad ways. Okay. That's, that's the contract we've made when, when the Lord brings us into his truth. Okay. So that's why we have to bring out lessons like this. So you understand, you brothers and sisters understand what you're in, in for. Uh, you know, uh, years ago we used to teach in South East London, Peckham, which you would say is a real a ghetto in London. You know, I mean, to be honest, there's no ghettos in London, man. All right, you niggas over here in London, there's no so there's no ghettos in London, man. All right, none whatsoever. Okay, there are areas with higher crime rates, you know, and usually those areas are full of you niggas, man. All right. But Peckham is an area where there's a lot of Israelites. And we used to catch hell there, man. The police, our own people. And I remember when we got arrested, there was a guy that used to come every week. And he used to listen. And he, he said, the week after when we got arrested, we came back. And he said, no, no, you, you guys got arrested. You know, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know, basically he was saying it's not worth it to get arrested for this truth. With us, it was worth it. And we know what we were in for. But the reason why he said that, because he was just new into truth and he wasn't rooted and grounded. All right. So by us doing these lessons, we're showing you what you're in for. You know, so if, if, if you're not down with with going through the, these kind of tribulation, just run off now. All right. Run off now. As simple as that. You have to understand, be perfectly aware what you're in for when you uh, are in this truth all right it's not going to be smooth sailing in this truth man okay i mean look at recently just um recently there's been a, a edomite guy who was a multi-millionaire a tech tycoon you know he had a case and uh he won his case and he went out on the yacht with his daughter and people from his workplace and guess what happened the lord sent a tornado in Sicily it was, and drowned the whole boat, you know, a couple of people uh, survived, a, a woman and a child, everyone else, including the Israelite guy who was the chef, all right, they, they, they were all put to death, man, okay, they were all put to death, they were celebrating some court case that he won, etc, and um, basically, they're, they're still looking for their bodies right now, they're in the bottom of the ocean, man. You see? So life is very fragile. The Lord can take you out like that. So you have to understand what you're in for and what you've signed up for when you're in this truth. That guy, and I'm, no, I'm not disrespecting him because he used to come and listen to us teach. You know, he had mental health problems as well. And he was a cool guy. And he used to stick up for us and made the Lord beat with him, man. You know, but he wasn't rooted and grounded. So when we got arrested... And he found out that a couple of weeks later, he was like, nah, nah, it's not worth it. Well, it is worth it for us, you know, and that's a part of the job, you know, to be persecuted. And that's what happened with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. All right. So these men were, were they, they were, they were cast in the midst of the burning fire. All right. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the fire and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So because they hit, they they because he said to turn the fire up and burn it seven times hotter, the people that were actually um, doing that, you know, stoking up the furnace, they they stoked it up so much that you know the fire catched on to them and burnt them up. See, that's the Lord working <laughs> in in itself. I remember. These are heathens, man. These Babylonians, this Babylonian kingdom, it 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 it, it had um, it, it um, Israelites in there, but these the Babylonians were a heathen nation. All right, so the, even the people that were stoking the fire were burnt, man. Okay, 
and who is the one that sacrifices? Who do, who's the one that chooses uh, uh, life and death? All right, it's the heavenly Father. He chooses uh, 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 who dies. He says, "I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal." Okay. Uh, let's see now. Um, Okay, so verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. So they were in that furnace, man. But what happened? All right, uh, verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded, astounded, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Question mark. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. So remember, they're in the fire now. But the king is, hang on, I see four men and they're loose. They're not bounded. Remember, they bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they put ropes around them and bound them and put them in the fire. So he's looking in the fire and he said, I see them loose. They're loose. All right. He answered and said, I see four men loose. So instead of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he's seeing four men now in that fire and they're all loose. Walking in the midst of the fire. So they're walking in the midst of the fire now. You know, probably doing a James Brown, you know. You know, doing a moonwalk. And they have no hurt. So they're, they're in the midst of the fire and they're not hurting. They're not screaming. Nothing. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. You know? So who's the son of God? Yahweh man. Alright? So they were thrown into the fire and the Lord made a miracle. Three of them were thrown into the fire. But when um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar looked in it, they were not bound, all right? They were not burning, and there was four of them. And one was like unto the Son of God. And who's the Son of God? Yahweh This is Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come up upon thee, all right? And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. All right. And that's Yahweh Shai, man. All right. And this is the angel that came to um, Mary, you know. And by the way, Mary and Joseph had sex. All right. There's no such thing as a, a, a virgin uh, birth. That That's all Roman Catholic dogma that our wicked people are... Our wicked people made up in the Middle Ages. All right. Okay. There's no such thing as a, a immaculate conception. All right. You know, not nothing whatsoever, man. And the sad thing about it is that our people are, that, who are Christians have that ingrained in their mind so much now that even if you prove it to them, they won't accept it because this truth is not for them. All right. So there's. There were four of them in that furnace, all right, and they were loose. And one of them was the son of man, um, uh, son of God, which was Yahweh Shai was there. So that proves to you, and this is the Old Testament, that proves to you that Yahweh Shai has always been there. He was there. That spirit that, that um, when we was in the, um, under the Egyptians, that uh, 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 death angel, all right, when we had to put, um, what's it called, the... Um, the um, red on our doorposts, all right, so that spirit would pass over us and kill the the Egyptians, the firstborn of the Egyptians, that was Yahweh Shai, man, okay, so he's always been there, he's been there in the Old Testament, and he's been there in the New Testament, and he's with us now, all right, doesn't the Bible say when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them, all right, now, how many of them were there in that furnace? It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That is um, uh, three of them. And they all knew the Heavenly Father's uh, name, man. 
All right, so that that shows you the importance of the names of Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. All right, so a miracle happened there, and it happened right in front of this king. All right, this heathen king Nebuchadnezzar. All right, so it shows you the um, importance of having integrity. All right, integrity is very important, man. All right, and in integrity all right and what does integrity mean all right integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles and that's what Shadrach Meshach and Abednego had that's why they said to the king that we're not going to bow down to your image and the Lord gave them a miracle okay all right but with with what's coming up um you know all the things that are happening that are going to happen all right to the elect some some of the elects are going to have miracles and be delivered and some of the elect are going to have to be martyrs and die horribly okay all right there's many scriptures on that man okay now when we had the um scandemic all right I'm going to bring this um, up because I think it's quite important. There was a, a um, brothers in Great Millstone who did a video and said that Christians were giving out cards to people um, and telling them to take the um, the snake juice, to take the, you know, uh, when we had the scandemic, to take the injection. All right. And they brought out, they on, on the cards... They brought out this scripture, Romans uh, 13, verse 1 to 2. All right, I'll read it for you. Be subject, and look at the heading, be subject to government. <laughs> All right, let's break this down, Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. All right, the higher powers is what your government. For there is no power but of God, or but of Yahweh, of the Most High. The powers that be are ordained of the Most High, and that's true because the Lord, the Lord puts uh, people in charge. You know, all right. The Lord, what He set set up kings. All right. Set up. Yeah, there you go. All right, and that's in Daniel. Beautiful, Daniel two and twenty one. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. All right. That's what the heavy father does. He takes, he, you know, he removes one person. So when you see in politics, uh, MP resigning, or, um, a prime minister resigning, or, or like this Joe Biden um, saying, listen, I'm going to step down and let Pamela, uh, what's her name, Kamala Harris run. God has put it in their minds for them to do that. All right. This is not it's it's not their own thinking. The Lord has put it in their minds to do that for His purpose, whatever that purpose is. So He setteth up kings. All right. He give wisdom. He giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had understanding of the heavenly Father. All right, and understanding that He's a jealous God and He has laws and principles, statutes and commandments. And one of them is not to bow down to no fucking idols. And that's why they didn't do that, man. And they rather choose death. But in the pandemic, you had Christians that were actually bringing, giving cards out. And on these cards had this scripture on it. Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of, of the Most High. The powers that be are ordained of the Most High. Verse 2. So, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Most High. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Alright. Now, does that... The, the main reason why I bring this out is because what this means is we are in captivity. And the reason why we are in captivity is because we broke God's law, statutes and commandments. So we are in captivity because of our sins. So God has put heathens, people who are lesser than us, all right, over us as a punishment. Okay. 
So what it's saying is that we have to obey the laws of this captivity to a degree. All right. As long as those laws do not contra do not um, uh, contravene God's laws, then that's fine. Once they start contravening God's laws, all right, then we have a problem. All right, because the MLTB to take the um, uh, you know that that chip. All right, the Bible tells you clearly not to take it. All right, it clearly tells you not to take it. All right, and it says you won't be written in the book of life. Okay, so oh, well because of this scripture, I'm gonna have to take the MLTB. No, all right, and the reason why Paul wrote this is because you had in around about if you look at 70 AD when what well, 66 AD when we had wars with the Romans because the Roman um, occupation it just like today in Gaza. Um, those Palestinians were there, they were living freely, and then um, the Amalekites, those gutter rats, went over to Palestine, and it wasn't after World War I, before World War I, they started going over there, but the problem was that the in Germany, when Hitler came into power, all right, one of the first things they did, all right, one of the first things they did is something called the Harava Agreement. All right, the Harava Agreement. Now, I think I've got a clip here that I can uh, show you. I don't, don't think the volume is that good on it. Uh, let's see now. Um, and the Harava Agreement was something that was done behind closed doors. You know, very sneaky. It was between the Zionists and uh, the Nazis. And basically, it was to allow these Amalekites, all right, to take their assets to go to Palestine. All right. Uh, let me see now. No, it's not this one. No, 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 it's not, it's not this one. I think it's this one, I think it is, yep. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, it was called the um, Harava Agreement. All right. Now the the volume on this is low, but I will explain it to you. And basically, when the when and this is how you know that the Nazis were funded by the Zionists, more or less, all right, um, the biggest population of the Amalekites, you know, were in Germany, there was 500,000 of them, and basically, many of them believed in the Zionism stuff, um, so when the Nazis came to power, that's why they created, um, you know, a hostile atmosphere, so these people can transfer and, and migrate from Germany to Palestine, all right? And as soon as these people went over there, they started killing the Palestinians. So now, what, what do they call it? They call it an occupation, okay? Now we are on the, we are, we, through our history, um, especially in 66 AD, we were under Roman occupation. So there were people all right, among us that wanted to rebel against the occupation. And this is the reason why Paul wrote uh, Romans 13, verse 1 to 2. Now, let me just play this. I think the volume is very low. The negotiation between the Nazis and the Zionists in 1933, which allowed German Jews and their assets to go to Palestine. See, the transfer agreement. See, look, the dramatic story of the pact between the Third Reich, which is the Nazis, and uh, um, the Amalekite Palestine, see, they did a deal behind closed doors, and as soon as they went there, they started taking land, killing people, all right, and now, what do we have today, over there, we have, um, the Palestinians call it occupation, okay,
Sí. Sí. You see all those dots? If you look at those dots there, all of those dots are basically showing that uh, these Amalekites started to populate this place. And when they populated the place, they basically, after a while, they took it over. So now, so now, what have we got over there? We've got a war. We have um, the group, what's it called? Hamas. And they are a group that is rebelling against this occupation. Well, guess what? When we had um, um, the Roman occupation in 66 AD, we had a group called the Sakari. All right. Now I know on on um, on the YouTube there's uh, that guy. What's his name? Alazar. He used to be in Great Millstone, and some other guys. And they've got an Israelite group called Sakari. All right, and they were zealots. They were like the modern day Black Panthers. You know, the Black Panther Party was rebelling against the system. You know, and doing things for black people in America. Well, that's what Sakari was doing. All right, but that's the reason why Paul wrote that. All right, in Romans um, 13, verse 1 to 2, he's basically saying that the reason why we are have this occupation, the Roman occupation, is because of our sins. All right, so we are subject to these higher powers. All right, so uh, uh, we have to live under the laws of these higher powers for now. Okay, for now. But the Sakari uh, were a rebel group who thought that fighting physically would get us freedom. All right, so let's read about it. The Sakari, all right, in, they were zealots, they were rebels. Assassination and became known as Sakari, all right? In Greek, Sakario, which means dagger, dagger men, all right? They frequently, they frequented public places with hidden daggers, to strike down persons friendly to Rome. So they were not just killing Roman soldiers. Um, our, our people that were cool with the Romans, they were striking them down as well. In the first revolt against Rome in AD 66 AD to 70 AD, the Zealots played a leading role. And at Masada, which, is just, uh, which was um, on the outskirts of Israel, all right, in 73 AD, they committed suicide rather than surrender to the Romans. All right. So the Romans besieged them. All right. And they were trapped and they were starved. They were basically starved out. Okay. So the reason why Paul was writing this is because when he was on the scene, the Sakari was on the scene. But what you have to understand is that we are under this occupation and this captivity because we broke God's law, statute, commandments. Until the Lord, all right, all right, until the Lord, um, um, what, what's, what's the word? Uh, um, puts things in motion to take that occupation and that captivity away, all right, then we have to try and live as possibly peacefully of all men, okay? So we have to be subject to their laws. But there's a cutoff point. If those laws, all right, start to contravene God's laws, then we have a problem, all right? Because who do we obey more? Who, who should we fear more? We should fear God more, all right? Okay, this is, um, this is Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's right, okay? So when it comes to the higher powers, yes, we try and... Um, you know, if you're working, pay taxes, you know, this, that, and the other. Well, yeah, of course, because we're in captivity. But when it comes to the MOTB, uh-uh. No. You know why? Because that will destroy your soul. That is you bowing down. That is more or less you bowing down to that golden image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. All right? Taking the MOTB is, is, is a step too far. So we have to obey what? God rather than man. Okay? And even um, if you go to um, uh, when your house shows on the screen, there some of the wicked scribes and Pharisees, they tried to um, 
answer this to him as well. Tribute to Caesar. This is Matthew 22 and 17. They tried to trip him up. And they said, tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? And tribute is tax. Okay. And it is lawful to give unto Caesar. But let's see what he says. But Yahushua perceived their wickedness. He knew that they were being wicked. And said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? He called them hypocrites straight up. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, whose is, whose is the image and subscription? Verse 21, they say unto him, Caesar's. Yeah, it was a... a, a uh, you know, all these Roman leaders, they were all um, named Caesar. Like uh, the first one was Julius Caesar. After that, Caesar became a title. All right. So in the time that Yahushai was uh, on, on the scene, born and when he were, uh, was uh, crucified, uh, it was Augustus and then Tiberius Caesar, I think. You know, so on the money, the face of your uh, of a ruler is on the money all right so verse 21 they say unto him caesar's so caesar's face is on the penny then saith he unto them render therefore unto caesar the things which are caesar's yeah which is tracts and tribute and unto unto the most high all right the things that are the most highs okay and what things do we have to render to the, the heavenly father obedience so it tells you about the um the motb and what the consequences of taking it is so we ought to obey god rather than man all right so don't let these stupid christians fool you because they use these two scriptures be subject to the government and gave out cards to people during the scandemic and telling them to take um, the snake bite juice, you know, and that snake bite juice got many people sick and a lot of people have died because of that stuff. All right. So we ought to obey God rather than man. Okay. So I hope that's quite clear. All right. So we can't fight this devil physically. All right. To come out of this captivity, the Lord's son and the angels are going to come back and fight. All right, some of the elect are going to get spiritual powers and they're going to fight in that way. So until then, we have to live peacefully with all men. All right, but all right, we have to um, comply with the laws. But if those laws are, are totally in contradiction, like if, like if they bring out a law and say, yeah, you know, um, uh, I want all the men to be sodomites. Are you going to comply with it? Of course not. Okay. So it's just foolishness. That's why this truth is everything, man. Okay? And the understanding of this truth is everything. All right? And there is going to be 144,000 men and some, some remnant of men and women and children that are not going to comply. All right? And take that MLTB. All right? This is Romans 11 and 4. But, but what saith the answer of the most high unto him i have reserved my i reserved to myself seven thousand men and seven uh, means completion all right who have not bowed the knee to the image of baal all right and baal is 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 more or less a deity uh you know a demon image of baal let's let's look at this search image of baal there you go all right, a false god, Baal, there you go. All right, so there's going to be uh, 144,000 men, all right, who are part of the elect and other men, women, and children that are not going to bow towards any idols like this or take the MLTB. It's all been predestined. So they're going to have the same spirit in them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right, they're not going to fall for it they were gonna rather die they're gonna be like the the mother and the sons in um second maccabees chapter seven which we went which we talked about in the last um 
in the last part that we did, okay? They're going to be faithful unto Yahweh by Shem Yahshai, okay? So don't worry about it. And the reason why they're going to be faithful is because they know their God. And they fear their God more than they fear the punishment of what they're going to have, okay? All right, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 3. For to know thee is the perfect righteousness. All right, to know who? To know the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his ways, and what pleases him, and what doesn't please him. All right, is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. And that's what we're going to get. We're going to be in the kingdom, and we're going to have crowns upon our head from Yahweh Shai, man. And we're going to be like gods on the earth. We're never going to be sick no more. All right. All the promises that are in the covenant, which is in um, uh, Jeremiah 31 verse 30. All right. All uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 8. All of those, all that new covenant. And the first person to have that new covenant to taste of it is Yahweh Shai. All right. He died. He rose again. He's on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. He has a spiritual body. All right, that that is immortal. You, nothing can touch it. All right, so he's the first to taste of that new covenant. So if we do the same, we're gonna be immortal as well. Okay. <clears throat> so that is the root of immortality: <clears throat> is to know thy power, and your power is who? Your God. All right. To know thy your power is to know your God. All right. So that's why this is a great example because Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego was burnt, supposed to be burnt in the fire, but they were walking in the midst of the fire. All right, like verse twenty-five says, and they have no hurt, <laughs> and the, and there's a fourth person with them, which was the Son of God, and who's that? Yahweh Shai. All right, beautiful. Okay, so I hope that's quite clear. All right, and. These things are going to happen again because these are examples that are written for our learning. All right. This is what's going to happen in the last days. And we pray that the Lord puts the spirit on us to have the same mindset, you know, to be um, uh, rather die than to give in to our enemies. Because our enemies is our enemy. Right. So why would you why would you acquiesce to your enemy rather than acquiesce to your God? All right. Which is the safer bet is to acquiesce to your God. We, we've all seen what we've done to disobey our God and the mess that we're in. So that's why it's, this is a spiritual battle. It's not physical. It's a spiritual battle. All right. You miss the tough guys in those days. Unless you are locked into this truth and the Holy Spirit is with you. You ain't going to have no, cho no, no chance whatsoever to overcome the evil that's coming upon this earth. All right, so let's go go back to Daniel three and twenty six. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. All right, verse twenty seven. All right, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, so their bodies were not touched, the fire didn't touch them at all. So the Lord had a spiritual hedge around them, nor was an hair of their head singed, so the hair on their head. Was not burnt at all. No singe, nothing. No burns, nothing. Neither were their coats changed. Nor smell of fire had passed on to them. So they were totally fine. Alright, totally fine. Now, in the times that we're in. Alright, that is coming. Some people are going to be delivered from troubles like that. Or some people are going to have to die like Mars. It's up to the Lord. But the ultimately is to have faith. And when these times come, the Lord, all right, will put the spirit on you to say what he wants you to say. Don't worry about 
getting a piece of paper and rehearsing what you're going to say when they say, listen, are you going to take the, the chip or, or off of your head, you know? Or they might take your children away. Uh, you, you Israelite women that have got children, they might take your children away and then they say, listen, if you want to be reunited with your children, take, take the chip. Are you, are you going to take it or are you going to fold? You know? Are you going to say no? You know? These are the things that we have to meditate on because these things are going to happen. All right? Our faiths are going to be tested. Our integrity will be tested. This is Matthew 10 and 19. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. So don't worry about what you're going to say or speak. The Lord's just going to put a spirit on you to say what he wants you to say for it shall be given it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak okay so when you know they might deliver you up to governors and wicked judges and stuff like that the lord will put a spirit on you to say what he wants just like paul all right paul and um silas they were put in prison and um the way they handled that situation, they started praising the Lord. All right, with songs, even when they were in prison, man. All right, shackled up. And why did they do that? You know why? Because they knew the scriptures. First Thessalonians five and seventeen: Pray without ceasing. All right, pray without ceasing. All right, eighteen: In everything, give thanks. And I, I, I and, and I'm saying this. Honestly and sincerely, I, I have to remember that as well, especially when I'm not well, you know, when I'm tempted to do something bad, you know, I have to remember these things, all right, to pray without ceasing and everything give thanks. When I was a kid, I used to have sickle cell crisis, uh, you know, and even sometimes I still do it and, and it's very painful, agony, whatever. You know, I still, sometimes I just say, I just say, Brakati how by Simi Shai. I still praise the Lord while I'm ill, while I'm sick. You know, what's the point in praising your God when everything's going right? All right. Uh, a test of your faith is to praise him when everything's going wrong. All right. When I was a bugged out Christian, I remember those times where I was not well or broke or didn't have any money. All right. And I used to play these gospel songs on my CD player. At home, you know, I hardly had any money. I had crackers and jam for dinner, <laughs> you know, little crackers and put jam on it, you know, because I was broke for the next three or four days. But I used to sing, you know, these gospel songs of praise. And that's what Paul and Silas did. All right. So what did they do? They remember these scriptures. They said, pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks. So in everything, in every situation you're in. Good or bad, try. And sometimes I forget, you know, and I know you don't feel like doing it, but it's true. Give thanks to the Lord. For this will for this is the will of the Most High in Amashiach Yahweh concerning you. Alright? So we have to praise the Heavenly Father when we're when we're good, bad, when we're in pain, when we're not in pain, when we're in trouble, when we're comfortable. You know? And that's what Paul and Silas did. All right, this is Acts 16 and 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Now, remember, they're in prison right now. All right, see, look, Paul and Silas imprisoned. All right, verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. So not just Paul and Silas. All the other prisoners' bands were loosed. 27. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword. And would have killed himself. Supposing that, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here all right uh, verse 29 then he called for a light and sprang in 
and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And uh, verse 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, I must, what must I do to be saved? All right, verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Yahushai Mashiach, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. All right, so if we believe, all right, and we show the same faith in all circumstances, not just we will be saved, our households as well. And that's why um, it's very, it, you know, this walk is very important because it's not just your salvation. If you've got kids, your daughters, maybe your mum, your dad, they, you know, they could be saved as well. Okay. So you're an ambassador in this truth. Not just for, we're ambassadors for the Heavenly Father and His Son. But really, you're ambassadors of faith for your family as well, man. Your house. All right. So they started. The main point here is they they were in prison, but they were singing. You know, they sang. Look, it says Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. All right. So that's what we should do, because that's the commandment. First Thessalonians 5, what and 17. All right. What does it say? It says pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks. OK. What's the point of giving thanks when you're just good? That's not faith. All right. So I hope that's quite clear, man. OK. So let's go back to Daniel 3 and 27. We've done 27. All right. Daniel chapter 3 verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, now Nebuchadnezzar is so shocked at this miracle, he's singing praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. And notice he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, because... His God is more or less himself. They had their own belief system. But he's praising the Heavenly Father now. The God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Who have sent his angel. Which was his son, Yahushai. And delivered his servants that trusted in him. See? And that's, what ha that's what's going to happen with us. If we trust. Whether we die as martyrs. You know, or the Lord delivers us from harm. All right. The main thing is that we trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahshai and we say no to the enemy. All right. And have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. And that's what we're going to have to do. So Nebuchadnezzar was so amazed at this miracle, he started to praise our God, the Heavenly Father. All right. Um, verse 29, Daniel 3 and 29. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. So anyone that starts talking shit about our God, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, will be cut into pieces. This is what uh, Nebuchadnezzar said. The Lord made him have a change of heart. You know? And why did he have a change of heart? Because the Lord turned his heart, man. Alright? And their houses shall be made a dunghill. Alright? A dunghill means a shit hill. <laughs> you know, puts a death, more or less. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. See? And basically Nebuchadnezzar was saying there's no other God other than the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God that we serve. And he was a heathen. But he saw this and he was convinced in his mind that the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is the only God that, that is worthy of worship and praise. You know, that's amazing. You know, verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Now, what does that sound like? That sounds like because they had the faith, they were increased in the last end. All right. Just like Job was increased in the last end. All right. Did not Job lose everything, but had faith and integrity. And in the last end, he had more than what he lost. And that's what's going to happen with us in these last days if we keep the faith. So 
a story like this has to be told, man. All right, it has to be told. And there's um, it's something that um, you know, we did it as a lesson. You know, and when we do these lessons, you know, we do it in house, but we have to share it with the masses because you know this, this is something that can boost your faith and boost your spirit because there's terrible times coming man you know terrible times are here more or less you know and um we're gonna have to have that same faith that they had and there's one example because there was an example of the assyrians right they took over the the southern kingdom or they, they were trying to besiege the southern kingdom and this is in um judith which is in the apocrypha all right uh chapter eight and uh, many of the elders, the so-called elders, they, they were putting time limits on God, you know. They were basically uh, saying that, you know, um, give God for a few days and if he doesn't, <laughs> you know, give, give God a few days to deliver us. If he doesn't, we, we'll do something else, blah, blah, blah. You, you, you cannot put a limit on God. And this woman, Judith had to rebuke the elders, all right? So we can start from Judith chapter eight. Uh, let's start from verse, uh, let's see, for, yeah, let's, verse 12, I think, all right? And now, who are they that have tempted God this day and stand instead of God among the children of men, all right? Let me not say God, let's say the Most High, you know. Verse 13, and now they try the um, Lord Almighty, but ye shall never know anything. All right, verse 14, for ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can ye perceive the things that he thinketh. And when people are in fear, all right all their principles or their so-called principles that they talk about goes out the window all right and that's why all of this salvation is all predestined then how can ye search out god all right search out the most high that have made all these things and know his mind or comprehend his purpose and a lot of times these things that the lord puts upon us all these tribulations is to test us all right it's a test man all right nay my brethren provoke not the um the lord our our god the most high to anger all right and well yeah we can't put time limits on, on the heavenly father verse 15 for if he will not help us look help us within these five days see they're all trying to put a time limit on 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 um on on god oh oh we're being besieged by the syrians uh, you know if if five days it doesn't happen if he doesn't deliver us then let's do something else we can't do that you can't put time limits on the heavenly father he can do what he wants all right for if he will not help us within these five days look he have he have power to defend us when he will when every day or to destroy us before our enemies so they were trying to put time limits on the heavenly father but you cannot do that man all right you can't do that all right verse 16 do not bind the counsels of of the lord our mo our god the most high for the most high is not as man all right, that he may be threatened. Yeah, you can't say, oh, if he doesn't deliver us in five days, we're going to try something else. No, you have to be patient, man. All right, you know, it's just like, um, you know, being sick and, you know, you're having pain and stuff like that. You know, you say to yourself, um, I was, I had that in, in, in August. No, not August. In November, when I fell down in my in my flat, I broke my hip, and I had an artificial hip already, and I broke it, 
and I was in pain, man. And I, I was in pain for like two, three weeks. I was literally not eating. I couldn't, um, I, I did go to, you know, I was on crutches. I was in so much pain. But I didn't start to say, oh, um, if God doesn't take away the pain in three or four days, then I'm going to go to hospital. You know, I just tried my best. I just tried as hard as I could to withstand that pain, man, until I couldn't take it no more. And then I went to hospital. I didn't put time limits on him. All right. And say, well, if he doesn't take the pain away by three days, then God doesn't care about me. No, we can't do that. All right. So he won't. So God is not as man that he may be friend. Neither is he as the son of man. All right. That he may he should be wavering. OK. You can't put time limits on the heavenly father. He does what he wants. OK. Therefore, let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us. And he will hear our voice if it please him. You see, the Lord is down to the Lord what he wants to do. So in the times coming. All right. In the in the in, in the times where well, they're more or less here. All right. In the times that are more or less here. All right. We, you can't put time limits on God and say, well, you know, I'm going to have faith in God, but um, I'm going to have faith in you. How about you, Mel Shai? But if he doesn't, um, you know, deliver me in a couple of days, then I'm not going to um, praise him no more. No, man. It, it says, be faithful unto death and, give, and then he'll give you a crown of life. All right. We have to be faithful no matter what circumstance. All right. This is, and that's what this woman, Judith, was telling the elders she was rebuking them all right now let's skip forward to um verse 25 uh, judith 8 25 moreover let us give thanks to uh to our to the lord our our god yahweh bashim yel which tryeth which trieth us even as he did our fathers see all of these things are tests in crisis he wants to know that we're going to be faithful to him all right and this is what this woman judith was saying and she was and this was the woman had the, the lord put the spirit on a woman to shame up these male elders man all right she said remember what things he did to abraham and how he tried isaac and what happened to jacob in mesopotamia of syria when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. See, he, she's basically um, uh, uh, recanting all the great things and how the Lord delivered all of the, you know, our forefathers, you know, our ancestors in the past. All right. Verse 27. For he have not tried us in the fire as he did them. All right. We haven't gone through half of the, the wickedness that they went through. For the examination of their hearts neither have he taken vengeance on us but the lord yahweh bashim yashai do have scourged them that come near unto him to admonish them all right and what does admonish mean all right admonish what does that mean all right admonish means to warn to reprimand someone firmly to advise to urge to earnestly all right so he's he's he he does that to mold and shape us that's why uh in in zachariah it says zachariah 38 when it talks about the two-thirds in america it says they will be tried through the fire all right and that fires jacob's trouble okay so all of the things that we're going to go through all right and the hell that we're going to catch don't put time limits on the Heavenly Father. Oh, if he doesn't um, deliver us, you know, in, in, in this time, I'm going to stop believing in him. If you do that, you didn't believe in the first place. You'll do what he wants, man. All right. Okay. I mean, look at, he 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 sacrificed his only begotten son, Yahushai, and he said what? He said, this is my son and who I'm well pleased. He said it, he, it pleased him to bruise him. All right. So this is my son. 
Alright. Who am uh, exactly who I'm well pleased. Okay. So why why did he say this? This is Matthew 3 and 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know why? Because the house I had faith. Alright. Unto death, man. Alright. And that's why in Isaiah it says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Alright, so if we are in Yahweh Shai and we believe in Yahweh Shai, we're going to be tested just like him. We're going to have to bear our own cross. We're going to have to go through the same thing as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we're going to have to have the same integrity as them. Alright, and if you're part of the elect, whether it's the 144,000 or that remnant that is named. Alright, and if you go to Revelations. Alright, Revelations 7 and 4. Okay. All right. When it when it talks about um, Revelation seven and four, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. All right, and they were sealed, and hundred and forty four thousand of all the tribes of the nation of Israel, of the children of Israel, all the elect is going to go through similar things, and if. If they are of the elect, they're gonna pass the test, the same, uh, 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 the same as uh, Yahweh Shai did, all right. And the Lord was what? He was well pleased with his beloved son. So if he's well pleased with his beloved son, and we walk in the same way, have the same integrity, say no to this fucking devil, his beef system, his uh, MLTB, the Lord will be pleased with us as well, man. All right. So that's why um, this truth. And not just believing in it, but walking it is is the most precious thing that we can invest our time in today, you know. And as I said in the last video, I know everyone's got things to do and busy and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, listen, your job is not going to save you, all right. Your gun is not going to save you, all right. Your knife is not going to save you, all right. The only person that is going to save you is the Heavenly Father, man. All right, and his son. Let's end it on that. Uh, yep, Isaiah 43. All right. Well, and all you preppers, all right, you know, you're, you're storing up your tins of beans and all that stuff. And look, there's nothing wrong with, you know, you know that calamities are coming. Yeah, it's a wisdom to have a little bit extra. That's fine. But... These devils, these elite devils, they're um, investing into underground bunkers, um, gas masks, and, you know, this, that, and the other. All of that, your tin food and all that, all of that stuff is just for us, for the elect, all right? The Lord can click his fingers, and your storage in your little basements can disappear. What are you going to do then? <laughs> all right? So we trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. That's the main thing to put our trust in the Lord. All right. Isaiah 43 and 11. I, even I am the Lord, Yahweh. All right. All caps, it's always Yahweh. And besides me, there is no savior. There's no savior. So just like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, their savior was Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. And that's why the fourth person in the fire was Yahweh Shai. All right, that's what's going to save us. That's who's going to save us, the Heavenly Father and His Son. All right. So listen, I hope that this was edifying. And I hope that um, if anyone has comments, you can, you know, put it on the on, on questions. You can put it on the comment board and I'll answer it. So I pray you are edified. You know, blessings to the elect and to the next one. Shalom.